Welcome to Chalk Paint 101, episode 12. If you're new to my channel, my name's Christina. And in today's episode, I wanted to talk about the differences of chalk paint, milk paint, and even the different types of mineral-based paints. When we're making and creating new projects using these different types of paints, my overall result going to vary? Is it going to be really different? And what can I do with one paint that I can't do with another? So I thought maybe we could kind of hit into all of the differences between these different paints and talk about the fundamentals of each. Let's answer some of those deep rooted questions. So let's get started. The difference between say latex paints and oil based type of paints, milk paint and chalk paint dry exceedingly quickly, which makes it a lot more fun to work with and really kind of ramps up our projects, especially DIY. Milk paint is well over a hundred, a hundred and some odd years old. And it was created because it was easier to transport a paint into a powder form. And this started in like 1860 something. So to be able to maneuver the paint, it's very lightweight and it's transport and transport costs end up being a lot less. And even that pertains to now. It's a little bit cheaper to buy than some of the chalk paint brands because it's light and it's a premix. It's a powder, you add water and you mix it up and there you have your paint. Now chalk paint is um, invented by Annie Sloan, chalk paint. She invented chalk paint in the 90s, I think early 90s, and she's a color expert and she's dealt with art her whole life and she invented chalk paint. So it's ready mix, ready to go, pop open your can and you're good to go. So a lot of that, as well as being able to accomplish some of the fundamentals of what milk paints do, but you're all ready to go. And there are some differences, and I'm gonna get into this, between the two. Love your questions. So please, if you have questions based on projects and types of paints, and even anything that I talk about in today's episode, please drop me a comment in the comment box below. I wanted to talk about advantages because I believe all artistic availability of supplies, paints, different types of textures, you know, even products that we use to apply our paints. There's no necessarily disadvantages. It's just some have advantages for this and some have for that. And it always depends on the type of project you are working on. So I'm going to talk about milk paint first. Milk paint. I actually started working with milk paint before I tried chalk paint and I love its results. It's thin, it's easy to apply, it's light. You can mix the different powder colors, make your own colors. So that is really advantageous with milk paints. You can buy, this is kind of a medium sized container and this is the milk paint uh, company that I've used, but there are several really good ones out there. There's a few different types and I think even Fusion has come out with their versions of milk paint because it has a beautiful finish. It's not overly thick and rich. So as far as applications, it's super easy. And what a lot of people love about milk paint is you can get that farmhouse style. You can get that really organic chippy kind of look with milk paint. Because milk paint can be unpredictable. So I have this which is ultra bond. You apply this at the time you've made your milk paint. I should turn these around so you can see what I'm talking about. So milk paint, because it's thin, it's bonding, especially to different types of surfaces can be very unpredictable and how it adheres. So you can always have the ultra bond and you apply this with this then apply it to your project. And this makes it very bondable. 
and you can still do, you know, aged effects. So maybe you're not interested in having an overly distressed look and you don't want it to be overly chippy and that kind of thing. The Ultra Bronze is super helpful. And especially if you're gonna be dealing with like glass and metal surfaces, this is really helpful. I'm almost 100% sure that most milk paint products are gonna offer a bonding agent to go with them. So this way you can have full coverage and it's more predictable for you in the project that you want. So that's one big thing. When and Sloan came out with her paint. Now she already worked with every paint out there from, you know, just plain um, uh, color pigments and different types of um, oil paints. And she's, she's worked with everything, everything you can imagine. She's an art history major. She, that's all she deals with is arts and paints and colors. So when she developed the chalk paint, she wanted a paint that was super easy to work with, dried really quickly. So she could just, you know, upcycle any project or she could change anything around her home decor in just a couple of hours. She was a working mom of three boys and she didn't have time for some of the way we have to use other paints and even going into latex and oil-based paints, the dry time can be very excessive. But again, wanted something super quick and it totally makes sense. And she loved the ultra matte finish that came with chalk paints. So everything pre-mixed, ready to go, open your can, you're good to go. Can't go wrong with that. And it's a very good high quality paint. You have to be a little bit patient. It is always recommended to mix your paint and because it can get a little bit clumpy at first, Stirring it really well is obviously super helpful. Sometimes you might even have to strain it so you can get the little lumps out because it will get lumps. And it's always advantageous to let it sit, preferably overnight in the fridge, to before you start your project. So there's a little bit of planning ahead that can be to your advantage to achieve a really cool look with the milk paints. And I actually just wanna quickly kind of show you the differences from some photos from just pure chalk paints to milk paints. The biggest thing is milk paints are thinner, so they're really easy to apply. It does dry as quickly, if not quicker than chalk paint, and you can achieve such a beautiful distressed and chippy look, and you can have so much fun. So again, just kind of wanted to show you those differences. So that's where that route is kind of going. Now you can distress with chalk paint, but you kind of have to work at it a little bit so two major ways you can distress with chalk paint. Now you can sand it. Just be really careful with the sanding because if you use a very hard grit, like something of a low number, like 40 grit and 80 grit sandpapers, you're just gonna really scratch a lot of the paint. But if you use a very fine grit sandpaper, you can achieve you know, a nice warm, weathered, aged effect with the chalk paints. And another really popular way to distress with chalk paint because it's water-based as well is the fact that you can just take a moist cloth, go around to your edges and corners, anywhere that you would like to distress, kind of remove back the paint, reveal what's underneath, let it be another color, or the true foundation of the project, let it be different types of wood colors you wanna show underneath your chalk paint, then you just wet distress. So that's a big thing. I wanted to talk about ingredients. Chalk paint, main ingredients to chalk paint is the calcium carbonate, talc, 
if I'm saying that correctly, T-A-L-C, talc, as well as color pigments. For milk paint, the main ingredients for milk paint is lime, casein, just like a milk. So milk paint ingredients is basically, it's a, what they call a skim milk, which is a casein. It's a protein that adheres to lime. Anyway, that's, that's the fundamental roots of milk paint. So one of the big things people love about milk paint is over time, it has a really cool aged and antiqued distressed look on its own. So it just, even just with natural age, not even from a long period of time, you can get a really cool antique effect with milk paints. And I actually, like I mentioned, have worked with milk paints even before I used chalk paint. But the unusual thing is, is I actually don't have any tutorials of me working just straight along with milk paint. So that is on my list of things that are coming up very soon. It's funny, I'm gonna leave a card for how I've used milk paint and I've used milk paint as a dry form. So if you're interested in seeing how I did that to get you started, but I do plan on doing a tutorial on how you can play and have some amazing fun with milk paint and what I would like to do for a decorative finish with milk paints. So going back to mineral paints, chalk paint, and even styles like this fusion. In technicality, these are all mineral-based paints. I mean, it's, it's kind of the root. It's just, it's just natural organic um, substance from the earth. I do know that this has a clay style and this is kind of more of a calcium carbonate style. So these little tiny components do make a difference, but at the same time, they're, these two in particular, is they're super thick, super fun to work with, and you can create some beautiful styles with the super thick paints. Now getting into milk paints, and I actually have these as examples. These are from Folk Art. So these are actually pre-made. So all you have to do is shake really well, stir, and she's good to go. I tried these, they're fantastic. And the amount of paint that's in here, I could probably paint at least three coats of a medium-sized dresser. You get a lot, even knowing it's small, so it's in comparison to my hand, even knowing it's small, you get a lot of paint out of that. It's almost like a stain in its own way. It's just another way of looking at it. But with the bonding agent, you can, it's not gonna be flaky, it's not gonna be chippy, but a lot of people really enjoy that chippy look. The other thing I've had really good success with, with milk paint is crackle. So you can do a lot of really cool crackle effects if that's something that you like to do. And this doesn't always apply to furniture. So if you wanna do bowls, you wanna do vessels, you wanna do lampshades, you wanna do picture frames, I mean, it's endless. You can definitely have some fun. Now, chalk paint, if you apply immediate heat, so whether it's a hair dryer or a hot gun, if you apply the paint really thick, I've done this, it's actually really cool. When you apply the paint really thick and then you immediately put heat onto it, it will actually crack on its own. I get this question a lot when it comes to does chalk paint and milk paint have to be sealed differently? And in actuality, no, not at all. Same with the mineral paint. You can use the clear furniture waxes. You can still use the decorative waxes, so the darks and the white and the black on top of these paints, no problem. And a lot of people are really opting out for the lacquer finishes and polyacrylic uh, top coats. Um, again, it's just for more durability for busy households and when a piece of furniture or even a piece of decor is going to be in a situation where, you know, it's 
got a lot of moisture around it. If it's in a washroom or if it's in a kitchen, there's going to be a lot of condensation going on. So this will just help protect that particular project. Another big question that I get is, can I use textures or create textures with milk paint similar that I can with chalk paint? And the answer is yes. But one thing to remember is milk paint is a lot thinner, so it generally will require more coats. It doesn't build the same thickness as the chalk style paint. So what I always recommend is you can add a textured medium similar to like say just so, or if you wanted to use salt wash or say baking soda, you can add that to milk paint and give it more of a textured look as well. So again, based on my own personal experiences, I do recommend using the bonding agent of the milk paint product. So that way you have a little bit more prediction on what the paint is going to do um, as, far as, as far as adhesion. So just be careful with that as well. A lot of people can make just straight up texture by you know, letting the chalk paint breathe and it gets super thick. So you can create some amazing texture or you can add texture medium. So yes, both, you can do pretty much the same. It's just with the milk paint, you may have to apply a few more coats as well as the bonding agent. So you're not chipping away the color that you're doing your textured decorative finish. I get a lot of the same questions regarding milk paint. Can I make my own color with milk paints? And yes, absolutely you can. You can take the powder of milk paints and, and play around. So if you have a light blue and you want it to be a little bit darker, so you're gonna add, say, a little bit of the uh, black milk paints or a dark brown milk paint, this is kind of a brownie French toast. Anyway, the point is, is you can mix your milk paint powders to create your own custom color mixes. That is not a problem. So one of the biggest differences I've noted from questions that I get on my channel between the differences and getting to the foundation of all of this is the distressed or antique look of what you're trying to achieve will be a little bit different between the, the distressed look that you want to achieve or say an antique type of finish that you want to achieve with these two different types of paints can vary a little bit. This being so much more unpredictable can give you a really kind of organic, faded, chippy effect. Just using straight up milk paint with no bonding agent. It can be very flaky and it can do all kinds of just giving a very, very aged look and almost a very core primitive look. Whereas you can do that with chalk paint, but because it's a much thicker base paint, you got to kind of work at it a little bit more. So this is where I mentioned that you can apply your hot gun, get some good cracks in there. You can you know, wet distress it back a little bit, but you've got to work at it. Whereas the milk paint, you don't. Just always remember the biggest differences from watching this video is milk paint is much thinner, more coats. It is more unpredictable, can have a little bit more prediction, but still can be unpredictable, even with the bonding. Whereas with the chalk paint, much thicker, lots of kinds of textures you can make without adding anything to it. And it's kind of all in one done, ready to go. You don't have to mix it. You don't have to, you know, set it up even the night before just to get this ultimate ready to go paint for your project. But I think both paints can fundamentally get you really beautiful looks. Never feel like your furniture is going to do exactly what you want it to do. So regardless if you're using milk paint, you're using chalk paint or any type of mineral based paint, 
I realize that there isn't always necessarily for heavy duty prepping, but your furniture pieces should be cleaned really well. Number one, any oil or residuals on top of any furniture pieces will cause disruptions to your new applications. The best way I can describe this is clean it really well and always, if you're gonna do a few furniture projects or DIY home decor projects, make sure to have some shellac on hand. Let it be in a spray or a paint on version. It's, it's going to be your best friend when that particular, especially wood, decides it's gonna be a little unpredictable because of its age and because of the finishes that have been layered over time, that even with a good cleaning, you are unable to achieve what it is you're trying to do. So that is going to be your number one product to go to. A lot of people say, well, I've primed, I've done this, I've done that. Sometimes even primer is not going to fix what that piece of furniture or project that you're working on and you're trying to put this new application on, it's still rebutting, it's still working against you. So this is where shellac will always be, it is always my number one that I go to. So I really hope that helps. So regardless if it's mineral, chalk, or milk paint, have shellac should problems arise and you weren't exactly sure what was going to happen or where to go or what to do. Um, I've had a few people kind of run to primer when they were having problems. And like I mentioned, primer is not always going to do what shellac will do. Shellac has more of a bond that's going to basically block out any of the wood tenants and things that are going on and the pores in the wood, you know, like there's so many things I could go on and on and on. So just to keep it really basic is have shellac. Definitely have shellac. But playing with the paints is number one key to understanding them. You can read all the blogs you want, you can watch all the videos you want, but the true understanding of how any paint works is feeling it, is that tactile touch and understanding how the paint is flowing and understanding what you can and can't do with it. And it's the best advice I can give anybody who wants to try. And don't be shy with it. I have had so much fun and even in my worst mistakes and things that went completely south on me, I was able to deliberate from it and still come out with something super fun and it's taught me where to go with my next project. Even in my worst mistakes, it's told me what not to do, which helps me be successful in what to do when I need to troubleshoot and do certain things. I have had so much fun. Whether you want to use the clay-based paints, you want to just use the chalk-styled paints, have fun with the paints because you can create so many cool, fun things and you don't have to go out and buy new furniture or decor when there are so many wonderful tutorials. I have over a hundred different types of inspiration as well as decorative finishes here on my channel. You're welcome to check those out. I promise I'm going to do a milk paint project as I think it would be super fun to show you the differences between predictable and unpredictable. Definitely gonna have some fun with that on an upcoming future tutorial. Thank you again so much for watching today's video. And if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and you can hit that little notification bell as that will tell you when I upload a new video. As I do upload every single Saturday, a hands-on project and decorative finish. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon, and until then, take care.